just wanted to catch this moment because um, taking fountains happy I did an art class with Mum a couple of months ago, and I just chose by random uh, to paint a picture of this abbey, which turns out to be just down the road from where my solar site is. And there's been two or three occasions where you know someone handed me this flyer. Just stuck on the wall there um, to say, hey, why don't you go and check out Fountains Abbey? So clearly, Fountains Abbey is calling me. And there's the uh, there's the motorhome ready to go. Right, see you later, room. We're off. <laughs> I'm going to leave my buy crypto T-shirt for today. I'm going to leave it um, for York tomorrow when more people are likely to see it. Thanks, Mumsy. What was that? How much each? 16. 16 pounds each. But it's a very big site, the lady says. It's about two and a half, three miles all the way around, is it? Two and a half, three miles all the way around. A bit of a rip off, really. Anyway, luckily for Mum, I'm going to add 20 pounds to her crypto kitty. So, yeah, one of the reasons why I think I might be getting called by this place is because over the last year, I've been doing a lot of research into something called Antiquitech which means um, beautiful, gothic, old style architecture that is so intricately designed, so beautiful, so complex, so hard to imagine how people of, you know, thousand years ago were able to do such things. So my feeling with this kind of place, these kind of structures, is that in fact they're much older than what we're being told. They're bit, they are from the, the previous cycle of intelligent humans who have since departed <laughs> um, when we went back to the Stone Age. Uh, but I think, you know, as, as we developed over time from the, the Stone Age, we, di we, we discovered these sites and turned them into religious sites. Whereas before that, I believe they were functional sites. They had a function, and I think the function was energy generation. I think they were there to generate energy. Tesla-style energy generating devices. So anyway, here we are. Let's have a look. I've got my drone. I didn't ask permission whether or not I'm allowed to fly it because the answer is probably no. So, just fly it, see what happens. <laughs> I used to be able to knit and watch telly, I don't think I can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> the style with this place is there's a, there's a never ending scarf and you come in and you knit, you, you add to it, you do a couple of lines and um, continue adding to it. And I think I'm going to do a couple of lines because it's been a few years since I did a couple of lines of knitting. <laughs> Tell you something. Yeah. I have got a scarf in my corner cupboard at home that you knitted when you were eight, probably, <laughs> and I'm saving it to give you to, to give to Esteban. Really? Yes. And it's so lovely, and it's it's every colour of the rainbow. That is funny. And um, and it's probably about two or three meters long. There you go. Forever a knitter. That's what happens when you grow up with women, basically. <laughs> And I can remember <coughs> your father, <coughs> your daddy, he, he thought that it was terrible that I taught you to knit. He said, that's not what boys do. You're kidding. No, he didn't like it. He didn't like it? He did not like you knitting, no. That is so funny. No, he didn't. <laughs> anyway, I did my row. And now Mum's doing hers. <laughs> so it's been years for you as well? Right. It's I like a lost art. I grandkids to crochet, but I never used to like knitting. Okay, well you can still do it. Seems so. I didn't really get the purpose of that until this moment. So uh, they're trying to break a world record. Uh, 78 meters is currently the longest scarf. And I don't know how many meters that one is, but um, it's got to be approaching 78. Anyway, that's what that was about.
maybe the real reason I was here was to add one line to that scarf. <laughs> maybe that's all it was. <laughs> 